Uh, yeah, hey. Okay, so yeah, that's me. Uh, my uh, talk is gonna be short-ish. Uh, basically, it's saying, yep, what he said. Uh, crazy, it's a code checker, it's a Clang plugin, it's a crazy replacement. I don't know if you guys remember, we had something called crazy back then, well, we still have it. Uh, it's some crazy uh, Perl scripts that try to understand the code until you're doing things wrong. Uh, that obviously, obviously doesn't really work because, you know, Perl and C++ and whatever. Uh, so using Clang as a plugin is much better because it can actually understand the code. Uh, it's a KD project, so it's hosted on, on our uh, Git repositories. It's mostly done by Sergio Martins, and by mostly I mean like 90% of the code. Uh, I checked the code commits yesterday and he had like 200, and then the next guy had 10, and then I had 9. So yeah, it's basically hidden, but whatever. Uh, so what does it check? Uh, before what the check, it has like four levels of checks called level zero, one, two, and three. Uh, those levels are how stable the check is, right? So basically level zero is mostly, like it's always correct. What does it tell you to fix? Level one is like 99% of the times correct. And then the others is like, you should not trust it very much. You, you, could, you should trust it, but just check, right? Not, not be blind about it. Uh, it's also magical because sometimes it actually knows how to fix your code, so it, it, it will like rewrite your C++, right? It's like, your code is wrong and I fix it. It's like, good, I don't need to do anything. I mean, sometimes like the compiler could do that, right? Like it says, you forgot a semicolon. It's like, well, just add it, you know? I mean, so you should be smart enough to do it. Anyhow, so I'm going to do some uh, examples. Uh, no, sorry, first, how to use it. Uh, it's not really very packaged, or I couldn't actually find any distribution that has a package for it. So you'll have to compile it. Uh, sometimes it's a bit tricky because distributions package the uh, Clang and LLVM libraries in a not very good way. So yeah, I mean, it works, but sometimes you have to fiddle a bit with it. Uh, then it's very easy. You just tell uh, CMake to use Crazy as a compiler. Obviously, you add it to your path, or otherwise you put like the whole path over there, and it will work. Uh, and then, as I said, uh, there's those levels. By default, level zero and level one are enabled, so the warnings you will get are mostly good. Uh, if you want to enable uh, checks selectively, you can either write them by name, there's a, there's a very nice man page that explains the names of every check, so you can just go there and check the names, or just go by level. So say, I want level zero and the check no QMU, uh, whatever. Yeah. Examples. So it does uh, tell you if you are trying to do a new style connect with something that isn't actually a signal, right? So you, for example, you pass a dot as the second parameter that would compile because you know it's just a function that the Q, uh, that the connect is trying to figure out. But then when you run it, you will never emit a slot, right? Because it's a slot; it's not a signal, so it will fail. Then it has a few of uh, performance thingies. So if you do set to list zero, then it, that's slow because it has to convert the set to a list, and then you get the first one. Well, you could just do set cons first, and blah 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 blah, right? Uh, it's uh, there's lots of checks that are about uh, m minor things, but when you fix all those minor things, it really adds up. Like it, it saves, for example, the, the Q color one, right? I mean, eh, it's not that bad, right? But if you create lots of like that needs to create a string, like a car, a car pointer that will create a string that will create the Q color, and then you have to destroy the Q string, and your memory is broken because you allocated like two bytes that are not being able to be reused again. So sometimes you get uh, fragmentation. It also warns you about you using Q enums. The new nice Q word is Q enum without the S that does more magical things. So you need to use that one instead of the other one. It does tell you not to use Q file name exists because there's a Q file info exists. Sorry, that capital letter is messed because right, LibreOffice does auto formatting. Anyhow, you should use the static version, which for some reason is faster. Uh, there also warns, like, there's a news, a very nice one. It warns you about uh, when you have a, a value that you never use, and it's a class, 
right? Like the compiler will warn you if you have an integer and you never use the integer, but the compiler can't warn you if you have a Q-string and you never use the Q-string because the compiler doesn't know if the Q-string constructor does magic things, right? But we actually know that the Q-string constructor and the structor don't do anything. So if you have Q-string S and never use the Q-string S, Casey will, will warn you about uh, that one, that's based on a whitelist, so it's, it's, not, it's not very smart. It's just a whitelist that goes over your code and, and checks if you, have, if you need to stop using it or not. As before with the values, so it, if you do qdelete all set values, that's, that's very slow because it needs to convert the set to a list and then delete it. qdelete all knows how to do that with a for each, so it's faster. It will warn you if you have classes with Q object that don't have the Q object macro, which also is interesting because you can do all the magic with the meta object and whatnot. Uh, there's a never ending discussion about how evil Q list is and you shouldn't be using it, right? So it also warns you about it. I don't know. Most of the times you don't really care, but you will get a warning. Uh, and that's it. Uh, my talk is just this. I, I encourage you to try it. Uh, most of the times you'll get huge warnings and it's like, meh, it's not really that important. But if you, if you go through them slowly, it, it, I think actually it makes sense to, to fix most of at least level zero and, and level one. Level two, it's a bit meh. Uh, there's also a nice uh, example that I didn't add here, which is the Q-string one. It, it gives you like there's you know like there's this Q string literal that does black magic and doesn't do allocations when you when you create it. It will tell you to use it. It will try to use it. Uh, we when I was working at Canonical on the Ubuntu phone, we tried that and it really helped with the memory fragmentation. We were having like we were creating lots of strings all the time and deleting the Q strings, and it did really reduce uh, memory usage. So give it a go. Maybe it, it helps your project. And that's basically it. Any, any question? Well, on Art, you can find it in the Art user repository. Okay. So it is there if you are using Art. And also, if you have any um, KD project that uses extra CMake modules, um, when you build, if you set your compiler to Clang, you can enable an option that is use Clazy, and it does already all the magic for you. So, right, you don't really need to do that. There's another yeah, option. So you it's just go. Models, yeah. You install it from. If you are using Arch, it's in five minutes. You can run it on your project. So use Arch or not. Uh, Uh, right, on, I'll, I'll repeat the question. Uh, he asked if there is any work to enable it on the CI uh, system. I don't know. It shouldn't be very hard because it's just another compiler, right? Do you know why it's not packaged for most? So I think it's not packaged because there hasn't been actually a release, like a tarval. Maybe there is. I don't know. I think there is not. So. Like if you don't give people tarballs, they usually don't package them. It's 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 a, it's a reasonable expectation. So I had heard you know something about doing releases. Oh yeah, that I don't know. I'm I'm here talking about something else. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to Sergio. Uh, it should be easily fixable. If if he hasn't done a release, we'll we'll make to do one. Does anybody have a question? Okay, then I have a question. It's a stupid one, uh, but uh, does Clazy actually compile the code after checking it? Because otherwise, CMake would error out with the uh, Clazy cannot actually compile executables if you say the CXX compiler is Clazy. So again, so does Clazy actually compile the code after running the checks? Because it it like it gives like the the, the errors are on compile time. So it, it's basically a compiler, right? So like as you would get the warning. Yeah. The compiler will give you a compiler warning. You'll also yeah. get the Clazy warnings. Right, because if you set the CMake CXX compiler as Clazy and it doesn't actually compile the code at the end of it, then CMake would complain that the no, no, C it's, compiler. It's, it's fine. It's, it yeah. will give you, at the end, you will get a proper binary and whatnot. Ah, okay, cool. Uh, 
Okay then, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks, Albert. Uh, great talk.